start off our inaugural pillow talk, um, a little chit chat between us and you guys, the fans. That's right. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we love about uh, the game of golf would be uh, the the PGA Tour, and uh, the two of us we really follow events a lot. Uh, every weekend, you know, we're kind of paying attention to Saturday, Sunday, you know, who's at the top of the leaderboard. And, uh, you know, when the majors come up, it's something that we always uh, pay uh, close attention to. And we, we kind of have a major here, depending on who you talk to. Yeah, I mean, most people call it the fifth major. Right, right. Uh, and, and again, the Players' Championship that uh, starts Thursday. So in a couple of days, um, uh, you know, we'll be uh, paying close attention to, uh, to what's going on at that tournament. Yeah, for uh, sure. So we thought it'd be kind of fun. If we built a team following specific DraftKings rules. So, with DraftKings, the rules are very simple. You have to fill six slots. We have our six slots right here. Um, and you have to stay under a specific amount. That would be $50,000 given to you. Now, each player is given a specific price. Uh, ranging from, I think, the highest price is like $11,500 all the way down to $6,500. Um, so we have chosen to fill out our teams. Um, we haven't seen each other's teams yet, so we have no idea who we've picked. Okay. And to let you guys decide on who you think is going to win our DraftKings battle. Yeah, so hopefully once you guys see the, uh, the players that we picked, we'll kind of give our reasoning why we picked each player. You can kind of post comments down, uh, down below as, as to who you think made the best picks, uh, who had maybe the best strategy, uh, who did the most research when picking their players, and uh, yeah, just give us your, your thoughts on uh, on how we did, and then certainly follow the tournament. You know, turn on the television, see what's going on uh, Thursday through Sunday. To the picks. Let's stop talking. Let's get to the yeah, picks. Let's get to the picks. All right. You, you, go, you go right ahead. Okay, I'll go first. You go right ahead. Uh, so with my first pick, uh, I tried to uh, I tried to pick guys that I thought um, had the best chance of making the cut, A, but they just have a positive and a good track record at these types of tournaments. So this first guy, he's kind of, he's kind of one of my favorite golfer, golfers. Uh, his name is Kevin Kistner. Mm. Love Kevin Kistner. Out of Georgia University. That's right. That's right. And I, I don't know, he's just a, he's a fun guy to watch play the game. He's consistent. Uh, he also likes to, to bet a little bit when he plays uh, back home with his buddies. And uh, yeah, he just seems to be a pretty laid back, calm guy. And it's just a lot of fun to watch. I like the pick. Thanks. I like the pick. Thanks. Appreciate it. I didn't take him. No, yeah, not surprised. I, I didn't take him. Not surprised. I did a little more research. Sure you did. Not to say Kevin Kissner's a bad pick, but what I did, Chad, is I broke my team of six into three teams of two. Yeah. Okay? So these first two picks that I'm going to reveal to you, one at a time, obviously, are picks that I just want purely just to make the cut. You know, if I make the cut, I'm happy. And, and in fact, I think these two guys were picked because they're going to make the cut. Maybe not make noise on the weekend, but they're going to make the cut. Okay. The first guy is a guy by the name of Emiliano Grillo. You may not have heard of him. He is Argentinian. Did your research. I did my research. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in the 14 PGA starts he's had, he's 14 for 14 in making the cut. Wow. So I look forward to making it. 15 for 15. Yeah, it's a good pick. Good pick. It is. It's a great pick. All right. So the next guy I picked, um, I'm a big Mizuno golf fan, so I kind of follow the guys that play Mizuno clubs on tour. And uh, and this guy, uh, you'll know him. I mean, I think pretty much if you follow golf, you pay attention to anything golf related, you've heard of this guy. And his name is Brooks Kepka. Oh, sure. The U.S. Open a champion. Yep, that's right. And again, the reason I picked him, hopefully I spelled his name right, the reason I picked him, one, he hits it a mile off the tee. Uh, he's, a, he's a strong guy. I know he's coming off an injury, but I just feel like last weekend when he played, uh, he seemed to make some, um, some strides in positive directions. And I think he's going to get the driver figured out this week and, uh, and be at the top of the leaderboard. I like it. It's a good pick. He is one of those guys that always has confidence. Confident guy. Confident he player. Always has yeah, confidence. Like you. Kind of like you. Yeah. Tall drink of water. You know, the ball a mile. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, just some, like you. Some weak short game. Uh, probably not him, no, though. Not probably him. not him. It's a great pick. I didn't take him. <laughs> I did not take him. Mainly because I was worried about that wrist injury. Yeah. Yeah. But my second guy, who's going to make the cut this week, going to make the cut, and is probably not quite as much of a household name as what you would think, is Bo Hostler. Yeah, great amateur. He was great. A yeah, great amateur player. Yeah. 
Bo Hosser. Bo Hosser also, he finished fourth in shots to the green. So I'm hoping he can bring that game here and make the cut. It's a good pick. Sure it is. Good pick. I didn't pick him. No, nope, sure you didn't. Not surprised. Uh -huh. But since we're kind of on the theme of injury, it's not a fun thing to talk about. My next pick also suffered, I would say, a crazy, crazy injury during Masters Week. Okay. So obviously, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, Tony Finau. And again, even though he dislocated his ankle, he still was able to play, still made the cut, and was in uh, contention Saturday and even into Sunday a little bit. So uh, again, long ball hitter, something I can't do, uh, but also a very consistent ball striker. And I think he's hungry. I think he's competitive, and I think he wants to win. I like it. It's a great yeah. pick. Yeah. He's a great athlete. I mean, just the fact that he can rebound, pop his own ankle back yeah. in, yeah, and then crazy. still finish in the top 15 at the Masters. It's crazy. It's fantastic. Didn't pick him. <laughs> I did not pick him. Uh. Yeah. So these next two, these next two, these are high risk, high reward players. Yeah. Okay, they're very up and down. The first one goes by Tyrell Hatton. Never heard of him. Never heard of him, no. huh? He no. plays more overseas. Okay, that's probably uh, why. He's been up and down in the PGA. He's been in contention, been in the top five finishes, maybe three or four of them, but he's also been in out of a hundred. Okay. Missed the cut. Um, He's a high risk, high reward, but I think for his value, the price I got him at, yeah. uh, I just you can't pass up on it. Okay. So I'm thinking. I mean, those are those are interesting picks, and I think if you don't know anything about golf, you're kind of watching this video and you're thinking, I have no idea who these guys are, but I'm I'm kind of getting an idea that these last three are going to be pretty special picks, they, like high dollar picks. Let's hope so. Okay. Let's hope. So, so this was a guy when I saw how much he was worth. I thought he'd be one of those high dollar players. Okay. Uh, because I think he has a proven track record. And uh, that's Justin Rose. Oh, it's a great pick. Yeah. So if you know anything about Justin Rose, uh, one thing that he does is he steps his game up when he gets into big tournaments. Uh, he, just, he makes cuts, obviously he's got to. But then again, he's always in contention, or at least it seems like he's always in contention on Sunday. So I had to go with Justin Rose when I saw how much he was worth. It's a great pick. Thanks. It's a great pick. Thanks. Another yeah. one of those household names. Yeah. You know? So if you can kind of compare our teams right now, you have a couple big names who mm -hmm. placed really high in some big time tournaments. I think all of them have won. I on, believe on they have. Tour, at I least believe once. they have. Yeah. And then you got right now you got a couple names that you probably don't know of. Let me throw a fourth one out that you probably <laughs> haven't heard of. Wow. Okay? Yeah, I, I like to go with the, the, the curveballs. And this is by the name of Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith. Now Cameron Smith is a young gun. He's only 24. He's from Australia. But if you did follow the Masters, which who didn't? I mean, who didn't? He finished tied for fifth. So he's not afraid Sorry. of the big lights. Yeah. He's not afraid to step up his game. He also won the Australian Open. Really? He won yeah. that. Um, so he does have some high reward there. Now, he also has a lot of finishes outside the top 100, many times where he's missed the cut. So once again, these two right here, high risk, High reward. Okay. Good pick. Thank you. I like it. That that might be the first guy he picked, and, I, and he was a guy that I looked at. The other three, I didn't do my research, obviously. If I lose this, I didn't do my research. Okay. I did. All right. So the next one, again, had, is very similar to Kepka in that he plays Mizuno Irons. I'm a big Mizuno Iron fan, and uh, I follow this guy all the time. I think he's one of the most well-liked um, players on the PGA Tour. I think people root for him. I think they want him to win, uh, you know, weekend and, and, and weekend out. They want him to win these tournaments, especially a major. I, you probably know who I'm talking about. I have a guess. You have a guess? I have okay. a guess. His name's Paul Casey. Oh, yes. It's a great pick. So again, consistency. Kind of if you look at my board so far, consistent players, proven track record. On to you. I do pick. like it. Thanks. I do like the Paul pick Casey him? pick. I didn't pick him. Pick him. Man. I didn't pick him. Mm. Yeah. Now, it's interesting. If you look at if you look at Chad's team over here, he's got a lot of consistent players. I have make the cut, up and down, and now we're gonna get to the final team of two. And these I think are the team of two who each person should finish in the top ten easily and both should contend for the title. Okay. So ironically, Paul Casey was my fifth spot. Okay. However, I switched him out 
for I think a player that most people will probably root for more to win a major. Mm -hmm. A player that may have revolutionized the golf fashion industry, <laughs> that's Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler, for sure. That's a great pick. Yeah. Ricky Fowler is one of those guys that has still yet to get the cusp of getting that major. I know this isn't a major, but it's a big time tournament. Big tournament. Yeah. Last year he finished in the top five. This year in the Masters he finished second. Mm -hmm. So I just think it could be his time. Yeah. It could be his time. I agree. And, and if not Ricky, then who? Then who else? Yeah. Number six. <laughs> I love that pick. In fact, he was a guy I looked at, and that's why I went with Casey. So it's kind of interesting. I yeah. thought about Ricky Fowler. Uh, but again, I ended up going with Paul. Yeah, two likable dudes. Very likable. All right, last guy. Not my favorite golfer like of all time, but he's definitely a guy that I've always rooted for because he almost quit golf. Really? Yeah, almost completely quit the game um, because his swing just absolutely fell apart early on in his career. And one thing that changed uh, is he started to hit uh, his three wood. And I thought, how appropriate for this channel, <laughs> wow. I got to pick a guy who consistently hits three wood off the tee. Um, you already know what I'm talking about. You already oh, know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh, Henrik Stenson. Yeah, the big Swede. The big Swede. And I love Henrik Stenson's game. One, he is m maybe the best, I don't know. One of the best ball strikers. He's a, he's, that's sport. what he's known for. I mean, the guy just he's hits the ball, ball consistent, right. consistently. Yeah. And uh, the fact he hits a three wood off the tee. Had to take him as my sixth pick. I think he wins it this, uh, this week. I just think it's, it's, his, it's his time to win, and uh, he's got the game for it. Yeah, didn't he have a, a big face-off with Phil Mickelson last he year? He did. That's you know, the, the two kind of ran away, and Phil had edged him out. Yep, that's correct. It's a great pick. I do like that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Did you pick him? No, I did not pick uh, him. I did not pick him. I tell you what, he might be getting second to this guy. To, <laughs> to sure. this guy right here. Sure. This is a guy who, I, if I had to put my chips on, I'm putting on him okay. this week. I think he's one of the Vegas favorites. Um, I think he has the ability to go lower than virtually anybody. In fact, he has. At any time in any round, this guy can shoot in the low 60s, maybe, dare I say, upper 50s. Yes. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. I know you know. Yep. Justin Thomas. What a great pick. Thank you. Justin Thomas is one of those young guys, young guns, come up with this, this new group that people say are taking over PGA. He kind of has that swagger about him. He does, yeah. Where he feels like he can take on any hole, and if he catches fire, mm -hmm. I mean, look out, folks. You're going to see a lot of circles on that scorecard. Yeah, very confident player for sure. Definitely. Love watching him play because he does bring that kind of that, uh, I don't know, just that, I don't want to say arrogance. No. But just this confidence and, and just kind of this, uh, I don't know, just this way about him where he's going to win a tournament. Yeah. Well, folks, you can see the teams right here. You have Chad's team and Adam's team. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to comment below and let us Please. know which team you think is going to win in this DraftKings battle. Yep, definitely. And again, we'll kind of be keeping track of, of how we're doing, you know, who's winning at that moment after round one, two, three, and then certainly round four. But I really think, you know, we need to put something on the line here. I, mean, I like it. There has to be some kind of bet some kind of challenge here. You know, if I win, you've got to do something. Uh, if you win, I've got to do something. Okay, so, I like it. Um, I'll leave it to you. You can you can choose because, honestly, I don't think you have much of a chance to win this. But I'll let you. I'll let you come up okay. with the. Uh, All right. The loser. <laughs> okay. The loser of this DraftKings battle has to wear a sombrero uh, the entire episode two pillow talk. Yeah, deal. Lucky day! I'm Ned Nidolander! I'm Dusty Bottoms, so and together we're... The Three Amigos! <coughs> and don't forget to check back on our channel and look out for the new vlog coming out. Yeah, That's going to yeah. be at the Timber Ridge, That's right. uh, our home course. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably try and do another match play, um, try and give you guys a little more feel about how it's played, as we only got to do four holes last time. Maybe you can see how it's played all throughout all nine. Uh, we also... Maybe pulling in a couple special guests for That's you. Right. That's right. Uh, I know for a fact one of these guests, you're going to love the shot tracer. Oh, yeah, for sure. You're for sure. Love it. He brings a very unique style and a very unique game uh, to the golf course. So. It's an elegant way of putting it. <laughs> an elegant way. Yeah, it'll be fun. You'll love it. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See you next time.